Charles River Watershed Association's mission is to protect, restore, and enhance the Charles River and its watershed lands through science, advocacy, and the law. CRWA was founded in 1965, but the river's problems began way before that. When Europeans arrived on these shores, the river flowed freely from its source as a tiny spring in what is today the town of Hopkinton to a tidal saltwater wetland that ebbed and flowed into Boston Harbor. In those days, indigenous inhabitants of these lands, the Massachusetts and Wampanoag tribes, had a close relationship with the river, using it for drinking, transportation, and as a food source. When colonists arrived in the 17th century, they immediately forged a different relationship with the river and the land. Rather than work within the confines of the natural world, they sought to conquer it. Settlers killed the beavers that created wetlands, filled in remaining wetlands, and culverted, diverted, or simply bulldozed over many of the streams in order to create dry land and enable the built environment we all enjoy today. But now those choices are having some undesirable consequences. When it rains, whatever is on those paved surfaces gets carried straight into the river, untreated. Gasoline, oil, trash, fertilizer, you name it. This polluted runoff leads to the growth of invasive species, fish kills, and toxic blue-green algae blooms. And in the climate change era, all those paved surfaces also mean more flooding. And we're not talking far off in the future. The Northeast has seen an 8% increase in precipitation since 1991, and intense rain events, meaning 99th percentile events, have increased 71% since 1958, the greatest increase nationwide. Did you ever think about what percentage of your community is impervious, meaning covered by roads, buildings, parking lots? Probably not, but you should. Anything over 25% means a greater flood risk. And in the Charles River watershed, that means Boston, Newton, Watertown, Waltham, Cambridge, Somerville, and more. Our watershed is actually the most urbanized in Massachusetts. And of course, these impacts will not hit people equally. Vulnerable individuals will be hit worse. CRWA is stepping up to this challenge. We have played a starring role in every aspect of the Charles River restoration since our founding. From litigation, to scientific studies to identify the real sources of pollution, to fearless advocacy, we have followed the data to hold polluters accountable even when it means taking on powerful interests to demand that we protect the river, our environment, and public health. We are working with leaders at the local, state, and federal level to advance the projects and policies necessary to reverse 400 years of water mismanagement decisions that are now threatening our communities and indeed our lives. It starts with rejecting the hubristic assumption that humans can control nature and says rather, we need to learn to live with nature. We are engaging with residents all across the watershed, including many who have historically been left out of environmental decision-making to build a strong and diverse coalition in support of a healthy Charles River. Two years ago, the Charles River Watershed Association created the Charles River Climate Compact. It's 22 cities and towns, including my town of Natick, working together to address the climate issues that we all face. I cannot overstate how valuable CRWA has been in making this type of collaboration happen. Thanks to Julie Wood and the CRWA, we are sharing information and learning from each other in ways we never have before. I'm especially proud of our work together to create the Charles River Flood Model, which shows us where flooding will occur in coming years, so we can design and build bold solutions that prepare for climate change. None of this would be possible without CRWA and the Climate Compact, and I can't wait to see what we accomplish next. My name is the Reverend Vernon K. Walker, and I have the privilege of being the program manager at the communities responding to extreme weather. Over the last year, we've had the great privilege of working with the Charles River Watershed Association. And our work provided by the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant, we were able to organize together residents in a virtual meeting to show them projection maps of what inland flooding could look like in the next 30 to 40 years. Uh, because we know that extreme weather is imminent, it's here, and the more folks that we are able to reach along the watershed, the more people are prepared for inland flooding. So I wanna thank 
uh, the leadership, uh, Emily Norton, Julie Woods, and so many other extraordinary folks. And on the behalf of the communities responding to extreme weather, we look forward to continue to organize with you. We look forward to continue to strategize with you. And we look forward to continue to mobilize with you. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Karen Monty Brodek, president of the Emerald Necklace Conservancy. The Emerald Necklace in the Muddy River was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. And many might think that it was for a picturesque park system and amazing views, but in fact, it was designed as a water management system for Boston around the turn of the century. You could say that the Muddy River was the nation's first example of green infrastructure, but that also means it's its oldest. And there have been changes, such as roadways being added, river being culverted that have led to its condition today. Charles River Watershed Association recently evaluated the condition of the river on their report card and it is a D minus. And thanks to that report card, now everyone knows about the need to restore the river. Today we're working with CRWA to restore the Muddy River and the Emerald Necklace to make sure that, that it can be everything it needs to be. A park, a healthy river to support habitat and wildlife, and an amazing space for all of those that need it. Hi, my name is Iris Cito. I'm the Rita Barron Fellow at CRWA. I found my way to CRWA after studying marine biology in graduate school so I could apply my scientific skill set to real world issues. I manage our water quality monthly monitoring program, conduct field work to collect water quality samples, write comment letters, and more. Right now, I'm looking at the new census data and analyzing how the demographics of the watershed have changed over the last 10 years, including how the population has grown in areas we know are more vulnerable to climate change, especially heat islands and areas prone to flooding. What I like best about my work is using my technical background to affect change. Here at CRWA, we are very science and data-based, but not for the sake of collecting data, rather to advocate for a cleaner Charles. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Katherine Clark. Over half of my congressional district is located in the Charles River watershed. As we are seeing more effects of climate change here at home and around the globe, the Charles River Watershed Association has been an invaluable partner to protect and restore the Charles and invest in climate resilience. Just this year, I was pleased to work with the association to request federal funding for the town of Waltham to install green infrastructure at the Embassy Cinema parking lot. This will reduce the likelihood of flooding and prevent polluted runoff from entering the river. And this is just one example of the critical work of the association. As chair of the Senate Committee on Global Warming and Climate Change, I'm working with the Senate President and my colleagues to draft bold new legislation to take us forward. Whenever I have issues of the Charles River, I know that I can rely on the Charles River Watershed Association. CRWA is always there with information, help, whatever we need. Recently, they testified before my committee and their information was extremely helpful. They presented issues that perhaps we hadn't even thought about. So, I want you who are watching this, sisters and brothers, to continue to support in ways that you can the Charles River Watershed Association and the work that they do because it's vital, it's important, and it's necessary. Thank you so much for everything you're doing, CRWA, onward. Thank you, CRWA, for all your help. Thank you for your friendship and your partnership and keep up the great work. We need you.